Welcome to Baby Got That, where I discuss my gluten intolerance and my digestive issues in hopes to helping others. Okay, so recently I had a colonoscopy and an endoscopy performed after I turned 50. And this is what is provided. It is a prescription only. You'll get this from your gastroenterologist or from your PCP uh, to take. And it is, uh, it says take as directed 12 tablets by mouth for two doses. By the end of this, you will be taking 24 tablets. It used to be a liquid. This is much easier, but it works fast. It's very intense. So in this box, you have a cup with two of these bottles. I already threw the other one away and I realized, oh, I, I think I want to make a video to help some people uh, prepare for their colonoscopy um, procedure. All right. So it's a two day process. And for I'll read the preparation procedures here. Uh, let's see if I can focus in on that. Okay. Uh, the preparation procedure for day one, uh, you open one bottle of 12 tablets. Step two, you fill the uh, provided container with 16 ounces of water up to the fill line, which is right here. Um, and swallow each tablet with a sip of water and drink the entire amount over 15 to 20 minutes. If you become uncomfortable and you will, uh, take the tablets and water slower. So what I did, because there's 12 tablets, split them up into four or six, whichever. And you want to do probably six. Maybe that's, I think I did four at a time, uh, at a time, but within 15 to 20 minutes, you want to be done taking them. So if you do six, you'll drink half of this cup and you will have taken six. Give yourself a little time to breathe and to just really digest what just happened. Nothing's going to happen right away for you to go have to run to the bathroom. So take your time swallowing each pill. Then maybe after five minutes, go ahead and take the other six. And uh, on here, it just recommends that every, with every sip, you'd swallow a tablet. And that's, that kind of worked for me. Um, that was fine. Uh, step three, approximately one hour after the last tablet is swall swallowed, fill the provided container a second time with 16 ounces of water and drink the entire amount over 30 minutes. So you're going to fill this up, up to here, another 16 ounces, and you're gonna drink that within the next 30 minutes. It's not, well, and the reason why is because they want that water in your system to help break down the tablets and for the elimination, for the pills to start working in your colon, <clears throat> excuse me, and you need the water to help get work through your system. Um, and also it's gonna help with dehydration. Step four, approximately 30 minutes after finishing the second container of water, fill the container up again and drink the entire amount over 30 minutes. So again, 30 minutes later. So within the hour, <laughs> you will have drinking three of these. Okay. That's a lot of water at one time. You're going to feel very, very bloated. And, uh, within that time frame, within the next hour, you might start to feel some cramping. The cramping is real people. It's going to start moving everything in your colon so you can eliminate it for your procedure. It's important that you follow these steps and that you drink all of the water. So some other things that I did to plan before I even started day one, the, here's what I did. You want to, a week before, you want to make a big pot of vegetable soup. So I don't eat a lot of meat as, you know, on a regular basis. Um, generally, I don't eat any beef because I'm allergic to it, but chicken and fish um, because it's light. Fish, if you can stick to it and actually no meat if you can. So 
<clears throat> make a big pot of vegetable soup. You can include small, uh, you can chop up the chicken if you have to have some meat in it, choose chicken um, and just chop it up really, really small and put it, or it can be ground chicken, that's even better, and, and uh, cook that and add that to your pot of soup. You don't want any large pieces of meat because it's going to, it takes a while for our, our bodies to digest um, and break down meat. It, it takes longer. So um, try not to have any large chunks of meat uh, at least a week prior to um, doing your, your cleansing. And then, um, so you want to begin eating light uh, that, that week when you know, uh, you're going to have the procedure. Um, I also, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, no raw vegetables and no meat. If, if you can help it, um, no raw vegetables. So do not have a salad for lunch before you start uh, this cleanse. Salad has a lot of fibrous vegetables. It's uh, lettuce is fibrous, spinach, very fibrous. You know, it, it will cause way more cramping in your stomach than you probably want uh, before the procedure. Um, you, you want to also stay away from spinach, broccoli, and asparagus and collard greens. Uh, well, basically all green vegetables have a lot of fiber. So stay away from them just for this week. Um, green beans, that type of stuff. Don't eat that. Um, buy clear juices, uh, Gatorade, Powerade. Apple juice is considered clear. So um, at the store that you want to kind of stock up on that. You can also buy uh, lemon jello um, and buy any type of broth if you don't make your own. Drink lots of water. Uh, water, I can't stress enough. Um, you're, you're actually going to feel very thirsty after taking these pills. Um, if you do not have, uh, I have a note here. <laughs> this may be a uh, very descriptive. If you do not have loose bowels, you need to drink more water. So by the time you start eliminating with these and these pills start working, if you are still struggling to use the bathroom uh, within a number of maybe four hours or so, you need to drink more water. Um, you also don't need to plan to go to the store. Make sure you do all of this prior to taking these pills. This is more, this is like an intense laxative, basically. It's going to get rid of everything that's uh, in your colon. And if you don't start eating light, anything you've eaten prior to that, it's, it takes time for food to digest in, in our body. So it's still, it's, it's uh, going to work its way through and it's not going to be a fun process. Uh, this can almost make you feel like you're sick. Um, you're going to feel like you have diarrhea, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but so you should have runny, watery, loose bowels, especially by day two. So let's get to day two. Um, day two, five to eight hours before your colonoscopy. So day two is the day of your colonoscopy, but they usually schedule it first thing in the morning. Um, what you want to try to do is you're going to count the number of hours. You may need to wake up in the middle of the night. You're not going to sleep well these two days. It's only two days. These will be the most intense days of your life, people. Nobody told me that. Um, I've been sick and felt exactly like I did taking this for these two days. Okay, so five to eight hours before your colonoscopy. So whatever time it is, if it's scheduled for seven or eight in the morning, you need to wake up in the middle of the night to take your other dose. Okay, start the dose to, uh, excuse me, start dose two no sooner than four hours after starting dose one. So if you're doing this in the evening, on day one, you need to set a timer for day two. Um, use your cell phone, use an alarm clock, use, uh, we have Google Home or 
Siri, whoever, if y'all have iPhone or whatever, but you're going to need a timer so you can space it out appropriately. It's important that you follow these instructions. And then you just repeat steps one through uh, four, just like you did on day one. And again, so if this took at least one hour um, to get through those 12 pills, you're going to need at least that same amount of time, but this says five to eight hours before the colonoscopy. So it could be like super early in the morning or something. So it's just, but start your dose two no sooner than four hours after starting dose one. So after you finish dose one, you want to make sure you wait at least four hours before you go to dose two. And um, it's important that you use all the tablets and water at least two hours before your colonoscopy. So because you might have to use the bathroom on the drive there, you want to, if you do it in enough time, you won't have to. And what I found is because I ate light the week leading up to the day, I didn't, I was able to get through the process a little bit better. So on the day of your uh, procedure, you want to wear loose clothing the day before and uh, excuse me, the day of the procedure, just lay your clothes out, make sure you got everything laid out. You, you're going to feel like crap that morning of the procedure. Um, <clears throat> like I said, space your pills out. Uh, the 12 pills over that 15, 20 minute time span takes six uh, with the first half and then half of a uh, cup of water and then uh, wait like five or 10 minutes and then take the other six and finish that uh, cup. So nobody told me that I was like some, some people, some, I was looking for some videos to, and nobody wants to be like descriptive enough to, to tell you what you should do. Um, if you're having this procedure, you already know that it's going to be a really crappy thing to have to do literally. So some of the things that, um, the dietary guidelines on here, uh, and then I'm going to wrap this up and uh, I'll do a part two to let you know what, uh, about my diagnosis and everything and how it went after the procedure. Um, but the day before your colonoscopy, um, you can have a low residue breakfast. So even, they're just saying what to do the day before your colonoscopy. Listen to me though, you want to start prepping a week prior. If you have heavy food or full meals in your belly, like you're used to eating on a daily basis, you're going to have so much cramping. It's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to be a very, very horrible experience. But some low residue breakfast items they mention uh, the day before <clears throat> the procedure, you can have um, white bread and biscuits, a muffin. Um, it says no wheat. I'm not really sure. Uh, I don't know if any gluten, well, I have gluten-free bread, but who eats gluten-free biscuits? Okay. So you can have cream of wheat or grits. I eat cheese grits. So that worked out fine for me. You can have coffee, tea, milk. You can have juice, but no pulp. So that's why I said apple juice, but coffee and tea, you can't put any creamer or sugar in it. So if you have some coffee, black coffee with a little bit of lemon juice, it actually doesn't taste too bad. So that's what I did. And then you can have um, eggs, maybe scrambled eggs or a boiled egg. Um, you can have fruit, but you got to peel it. So if you have an apple, you want to take peel the skin. That's so much fiber. Um, <laughs> that's funny. You can eat cornflakes um, and you can have yogurt. So you don't want to or, or cottage cheese. After breakfast, you may have only clear liquids until after your colonoscopy. The last time you will eat will be breakfast the day before your colonoscopy. It's very light. Make it a good one because you're going to be miserable the rest of the time. That see, it's, it's just that you're miserable because they told you you cannot eat. So if you were intermittent fasting, you would be like, oh, this is such a challenge. But the moment somebody tells you what you can't do, you, you crave it. So I'm telling you, you'll be hungry. So get your broth ready. You can't have your soup, but you can have your broth. You can have, um, you know, jello, yellow jello. 
Um, you can drink as much juice as you want and you can drink as much water as you want. But as long as you get through that evening, your colonoscopy is going to be the next morning generally. And um, some examples of clear liquids. Again, you can have coffee, fruit juices, no pulp, uh, gelatin desserts like jello uh no fruit top you know you can't put any fruit in it or toppings um water chicken broth clear soda so ginger ale sprite seven up um no red or purple liquids no milk or alcoholic drinks so you cannot have alcohol before your procedure you cannot have red or purple liquids so you don't want to have any soda you don't want to have any um, Kool-Aid or Crystal Light with those little funny colors in them because that could show up as a problem with those colored, that colored dye, that food dye. So it's very important that you keep all of your liquids clear and you will get through it. So I wish someone would have shared that with me before my procedure. Um, I am just here to let you know you will get through it. It's a um, it's a really good um, procedure to have. It's going to check for uh, cancer, cancerous cells um, in your colon. That's the this is the only way you can find it. You're going to be asleep. You don't feel anything, and it's less than thirty minutes. The the whole procedure, even though I had my um, endoscopy and the colonoscopy at the same time it was less than 30 minutes. Generally, I believe they, when they do the colonoscopy, it's about, uh, 15, 20 minutes and you're out of there. So I had them both done at the same time and there's st it's still less than 30 minute procedure. And, uh, so I will do a part two to let you know, um, how uh, my procedure, uh, what came back on my test results and what they found. So stay tuned. Thanks.